The cross was something that was a horrible thing. It wasn't something that people centered their, their thought life on a cross. But it was a perfect image of death to self so that you can live in Christ. In Romans it says that if you are in Jesus Christ, that the old person died on the cross and you are raised again with Jesus Christ from the dead into a new creation in Him. Eventually you have to come to a point where we stop becoming like babies. We stop living like babies in Jesus and mature in Christ. Everybody say, grow up. Paul said that we start out like babies and we can only drink milk. But then eventually we have to move from milk to solid food. We have to mature in Christ. And he said mature from the work of repentance into the maturity of Christ. So what that means is instead of continuing in all these old habits and doing all these old things every single day that we know are not right and then on Sunday, running at the altar and asking for forgiveness and repentance of all these things. But actually, instead of that, ask for forgiveness of your sins, but then take the step. Everybody say, take the step. Take the step. To eliminate those things out of your life and begin to follow closely after Jesus. That's what it means to follow Jesus. Jesus said, if any man loves me, he'll keep my commandments. The fruit of real love is obedience. It doesn't mean that you're perfect, or else Jesus wouldn't have had to come. But what it does mean is it says that in your heart, something changes. And you say, Jesus, not because I want to be religious, not because I want to make myself look better than other people, but today I make the specific choice and decision in you, Jesus Christ, to die into myself. And in every area of my life, I want to please you today. Not just when I sing it Sunday morning, I'm not going to wait till Sunday. But today I'm going to worship you with the lifestyle that I live, with my passions and my desires, my thought life, the meditation of my heart. What I do and what I say today, I want that to be my worship to you, Jesus, more than my songs. Because we're going to be judged on the life that we live, not on the songs that we, that we sung, but the lifestyle that we lived. That we live it 120% madly in love with Jesus Christ. You know, the church of Ephesians in Revelation, they were Timothy's church. They were an amazing church. They were doing amazing things for God. And yet Jesus said, he said, he said, out of eight things, seven things they were doing right, but one thing they were doing wrong, they had lost their first love for Jesus Christ. If I, and in, in every other area in life, that's a success, right? If I was a baseball player and I could hit the ball seven times out of eight times up at the plate, I'd be the greatest baseball player that ever lived. Same thing in basketball, if I could make a shot seven times out from, the, from a three-pointer, seven times out of out of eight times, I would be the best basketball player that ever lived. But in every other area, in every other point in life that's successful, but in the kingdom of God, you can be lacking in the one area, doing seven things right, being productive in every other area of your life, productive. But yet in one area of your life, the one that matters, the first love area, we're failing. And you know what? Because the first love area failed in the Ephesians and made all of their other work they were doing illegitimate. We have to come to a place where every single thing we do for God is motivated out of, out of our love for Jesus Christ. Right? <laughs> Fall in love with Jesus again. Fall in love with Jesus. That only comes through seeking God in your prayer life. I can tell you right now today, the number one desire of the enemy is not for you to stop going to church or to stop listening to Christian radio or to stop uh, reading your Bible, leaving the devil. You know what he wants you to do? He wants you to stop praying. And he will try to take even good things that you enjoy to destroy the best things. He will take things that you enjoy that are good things that aren't necessarily sinful things and he'll take those things and he'll clutter your life with all these good things that you think, oh, this is fine. It's okay to be doing this. It's okay to watch this TV show. It's okay to be on Twitter this amount of time and Facebook this amount of time. None of these are sins. And you'll clutter your life with all these things and, and slowly and steadily grass and dirt begins to grow over the walkway and the pathway to your prayer closet. And then you find yourself six months down the road colder than, than ice. 
and your heart like stone. And you walk into church on Sunday and you're singing songs, but you can't, you feel nothing inside. Your prayer life is the fuel to your walk with Jesus Christ. And then it's a, it's a never in your circle. Then your lifestyle, you pray to get strength from God in the morning. And then you pray all throughout the day in your heart for God to keep you in that place of grace, to keep you in that place of relationship with Him, even in your thought life. You don't have to pray out loud. But throughout the day, do you know you can pray all day in your heart to God? And that helps you live for God. And then here's the crazy part. Then your lifestyle affects your prayer closet. So you go back into your prayer closet because you've been listening to the voice of God out here in your daily life, then God wants to listen to you. It's a never-ending circle. And I would, if we can encourage you guys with anything today, would be your, if you've lost that flame, if you've lost that fire for Jesus Christ, you see the people who enter the kingdom of God, Listen, they're not the ones that went to church all the time. They're not the ones who were very productive for God. The people that are going to enter into the kingdom of heaven are the, the, the five virgins that had their lamps lit and five that didn't. And that lamp is the burning lamp of intimacy and love with Jesus Christ. And the hardest thing is not to, not to do things right. The hardest thing is not to sin. The hardest thing is to stay in love with Jesus Christ. I'm talking about passion and love, where it doesn't matter what the pastor's speaking about or what the worship team's singing or if they've got a good voice or not or if the pastor's a great communicator or not or if it's your favorite scripture. None of that matters when you're in love with Jesus. So let me pray for you guys really quick. God, I pray this evening that you would touch every single individual in this place. You know every single person. You know their story. You know their family. You know their situation in life, where they're at, God, because you're, you're sovereign in all things and you ordain all things. It says that the steps of a righteous person are ordered by the Lord. And God, there are people here that are striving after you, Jesus Christ. And they have a desire to do what is right. Paul said, God, I have a desire to do what's right, but not the ability to carry it out. So God, I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit, you said that your grace is sufficient for us in all things, Jesus Christ. And your grace is the power that gives us the ability to change ourselves. Your grace is a power that we do not have innately in ourselves. And that power changes us from the inside out. So Jesus Christ, I pray that we would surrender to that power. Because we cannot change ourselves. But we can only surrender to the power that changes us. I pray right now, Jesus Christ, for all the young men in this room. That you begin to move upon their hearts. To weed out, like, like you said, Jesus Christ. To gouge out the eye if it causes us to sin. To cut off the right hand if it causes us to sin. There are things in young men's life here today, Jesus Christ, that the devil is using as an avenue to take them out, God. And I pray right now that you move upon their hearts, Jesus Christ, and give them the grace and strength of soul to take the first step to eliminate those things. If it's the iPhone, get rid of the iPhone. If it's the computer, get rid of the computer. I pray for the young women in this place, Jesus Christ, that there are things the enemy is trying to use to take them out, Jesus Christ. And I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that you administer them, shake them up right now, Jesus Christ. And show them that they are greatly loved. They don't need everything else, God. All they need is you, Jesus Christ. And then you bring, you show them that your love is the greatest satisfaction, oh God. Nothing satisfies more than me, Jesus Christ. Touch these people here today, Jesus Christ. Touch my generation. Use them for your glory, oh God. Use them to, for another awakening in America, God. Another awakening, oh God. Oh God, some of these people are going to carry the gospel to nations, Jesus Christ. And I pray, oh Father, that you fill them up to the crown of their heads, to the soles of their feet. With the fullness and the passion of the cross. That you burn the cross in their heart, Jesus Christ. That they'll carry it passionately to other cultures and other nations in the world, Jesus Christ. Sharing the gospel with others, God. I thank you, God. Use them mightily for your kingdom and for your glory. And don't let them sleep tonight, Jesus. Oh, God, touch them with your spirit and your power. Oh, God, stir them in their sleep, oh, God. Fill their dreams, oh, God, with who you are and the fullness of your presence and your purpose for their life, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your love, oh God. Thank you for this evening and letting us come here, Jesus Christ. I pray that you bless all these people. In Jesus' name, amen.